Shambhala is really where our bass music got its start, for sure. You'd be pretty hard pressed to find anyone on the West Coast who doesn't know about Shambhala or hasn't been here once. You know, this place is an epicenter for awesomeness. Shambhala was the very first outdoor music festival I ever went to, and it, it definitely changed the course of my career and life. It's crazy. I, I, I've seriously traveled around the world. I've played all these different festivals, but something about Shambhala is different, you know? It's the energy here. Sometimes that pure expression of joy and family gets lost, and it's found here at Shambhala. <laughs> People work hard in their life and they got their schedules and their responsibilities and everything and then they come here and they can dress up crazy and dance like nobody's watching and all that kind of stuff. I couldn't imagine a year without coming back to this festival. And it's special for reasons that like other festivals just can't touch, they can't compare because there's some like really fundamental things like when you talk about building a festival, you get a piece of land and these big semi trucks drive in and they just plomp down these trucks and these stages open up. Well that's not Chambla and that's like what most people don't understand if they haven't been here. This is like a family owned farm, there's no corporations here, it's still since day one owned and operated by family and the stages are each run by a different group of people every year and they're like a permanent infrastructure. So kind of like from the very like foundation, like the building building blocks of the festival, by definition, it's different. In 98, I guess, I uh, started going to some of the parties that were going on in the Kootenays and kind of fell in love with the scene. And coming from this farm, kind of put two and two together and started working with uh, some of the original people of the scene around here. Our burgers are all meat from the farm and a lot of the structures, like the village stage, that's all wood that my dad has milled. And, they have and continue to help build this community and, and continue to solidify it and have a place in, in all of Western Canada for people to keep going to. They've gone from, I believe, 600 at the first party to 15,000. That's pretty meteoric. Just to watch the growth of what it's come from, from being like a modest little farm party to like a world-class mega event. Every year, they, you're like, how are they going to up the production level? And it, it happens. Just the whole scope of it, the, 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 the party's here every year, so they don't put up a simple stage. It's every year, just reinvented into something bigger and crazier. Because those guys have such vision and such integrity, and they've managed to put together something so unique, Artists actively seek it out and want to play it, you know? So they're able to bring in anyone they want from all over the world. And with such a massive event, you can also bring in people that maybe everybody doesn't know, but it's okay because there's so many people here and they'll wonder and discover something new. And I definitely think a lot of people have been introduced to stuff they would have never heard in a regular city. They're like the gatekeepers for like bass music, you know what I mean? They're really sort of like at the top of the heap of like, being the tastemakers and the social influencers. They've always paid attention to what's to emerging sound, and that's incredibly important if you want to stay relevant as a music festival. Some of the music you hear, you're like, it's, there's a lot of the, what's that? I've never heard that before, whether it's a song or a sound or a genre even. You're like, you see people kind of like get together and you see masses enjoy that. So you never know what's next. You hear all kinds of different stuff here. It's all about creating an environment that is like a temple to creativity that will help the people who are there feel that their imagination has been touched and that they want to get more hands-on and more creative in their own life. It's always had a very non-corporate feeling. There's no major corporate sponsors, and the family's done a really great job of kind of keeping that at bay, even though they had opportunities for it. Uh, which allows them a lot more control and lets them not have to answer to secondary and tertiary agendas. They don't even sell alcohol here. These people want to throw a festival that they can be proud of growing something that's really respectable. And the actual goal of this festival is to make something that they can stand behind creatively and culturally that can help to transform people's lives and like heal them from just all this horrible corporate fear and 
consumer garbage that's jammed down our throat all day. You know, this is really, it's medicine. A festival like this is medicine for all these people. My job here on the farm is to manage the different teams under, under the harm reduction umbrella. So Anchors is a part of the umbrella, Sanctuary, Options for Sexual Health, Camp Clean Beats, Women's Safe Space, and Outreach. We're trying to be upstream in terms of safety and public education and prevention and not be crisis management. So what we're doing is we're helping people understand the risks around drug use that can happen. Because we're not here to condone drugs, but we're also not here to condemn drugs either. We understand it's a reality and we're getting real. <laughs> People are really integrating those harm reduction messages that are going out there. What I say to people that say this is just condoning drugs, well, what's the solution then, right? Like, we need to really work towards something that is the best. There's always been a segment of society that has wanted to experiment with drugs. In many different generations, that has happened. We're not going to change their behaviors, but all we can do is help them make better choices. And Chambala is no different than any other dance music festival. Because we have drug testing, it doesn't mean more people do drugs here. It just means more people are able to be safer. It's never really changed, and that's the beauty of it. That, like, that is what makes it special, is because the people and the vibe here is untouchable. Shambhala, like, undeniably has had a huge impact on just underground electronic music culture. It's, it's crucial to our culture's development to have these kind of summits where we can come together and connect and share ideas, get inspired. I made some of the best friends ever at these events. The, the connections that happen at these events actually change the trajectory of, of the music industry in this part of the world. I hope and I feel that people come here and learn to love themselves and learn to love each other. I hope they take that back to their regular routine. Like this, for us, this is like, the epicenter of like friends, music, stages, <laughs> production, like the people who are doing amazing things, it's all happening here. It's just a beautiful community where people come together and I don't think you can experience this kind of thing anywhere else in the world.